सोमपुत्राय विद्महे महाप्रज्ञा धीमह तन्नो बुद्ध प्रचोदयात् ओम लॉर्ड बुद्धा वॉज बॉर्न एज सिद्धार्थ गौतम टू द चीफ ऑफ द शाक्या क्लैन बिफोर हिज बर्थ इट वॉज प्रिडिक्टेड दैट ही वुड ईदर बिकम अ ग्रेट मोनार्क और अ मोंक टू प्रिवेंट द लैटर His father made sure to never let him out of the palace and kept him busy with royal businesses in its confines. Soon he grew into a young adult and was married to the beautiful princess Yashodhara and had a son. Until one day he decided to know the outer world and set out on his chariot. What he saw in this journey changed his life forever.
about self-awakening and realization as much as it is about regret and reanalyzing decisions. It is said that after he returned as a monk, he regretted having renunciated his duties and for neglecting his relationships. For he got to know that knowing oneself is a process that does not necessarily have to always take place in isolation. It's more of a practice that can be inculcated in our daily lives by following a path of moderation. Because perhaps all that one needs is right guidance, determination and faith. Lord Buddha's teachings are not like philosophies from faraway lands. They are more like quests to know oneself deeper. An episode of his life narrates when he once asked one of his disciples to fetch water for him to drink. His disciple went to a nearby pond and when he went there, he saw that the water was muddy. So he went back to Buddha empty handed and was almost proceeded to go back when Buddha told him to wait. Wait for the mud to settle. But the disciple seemed reluctant. He said the water wouldn't get any clearer. But Lord Buddha said, let's wait. After some time, Lord Buddha repeated his request. This time when the disciple went back to the same pond, he was surprised to see that the water was not clear as the mud had settled down. So he could successfully carry back a pot of water for him to drink. When Lord Buddha saw this, he remarked that all that he needed to do was wait for the mud to settle. This little act was a lesson in patience and mindfulness. When our mind is disturbed, it's like muddy water. And at such times, it's necessary to just let it be. Allow the chaos to settle so we can become calmer and clearer. Lord Buddha's teachings bestow on us peace of mind. He tells us that sometimes it's very necessary to just sit with the mind and observe it. Not resist any thought, not deliberately try to impose a calm and a restless pace. Rather, just allowing the thoughts to come and go as we sit there as passive observers, not actively engaging with any of the thoughts. It might get crowded at times, but it's important to realize that a sense of calm is still there. We just have to hold on to it. Rather than controlling the mind, it's always better to familiarize ourselves with the mind. Familiarize ourselves with how the mind functions, how it traces through the calm and the chaos, and to learn to be at peace with it while it works at its own pace without forcing it to be a certain way. Allowing the mind to adapt to changing situations only helps us learn to be at ease with it. Lord Buddha has been quoted saying that it's always better to conquer our own selves than a thousand battles outside. For that is a victory that only belongs to us and nobody else can claim. For knowing others may be wisdom, but knowing oneself is enlightenment. Another short story of his life narrates when he once set out to walk all by himself. And that is when a grieving man in a fit of rage hurled abuses at Lord Buddha. But Buddha remained calm. That is when the next day the man got to know that the person that he had abused was Gautam Buddha himself. He ran to him to apologize. And once he apologized, he was shocked to see when Buddha asked him who he was and why was he apologizing. To this, the man reminded him of the day before's incident. To which Buddha very calmly replied that I know no yesterday. I know only today. This was Lord Buddha, who lived just in the present moment. Past, future, memory and imagination did not exist in his world. He was free from the distorted defense of the past and the anxious expectations of the future. And his main virtue was forgiveness. Forgiveness that places itself at the pinnacle of spiritual attainment, next to compassion. The day Buddha sets out on his chariot to know the outer world, that marks the change in his life. Because up until then, he did not know what being sick felt like. He did not know how an old man looked like. And he did not even know if death was a consequence.
concept that actually existed for he had been living a very rosy and a happy life bereft of certain existential truths that could not permeate his palace walls to be able to reach him he almost lived in a box a box that protected him from the grim realities of the present a box that only allowed him to dwell upon memory and imagination perhaps which is why later in his life he shuns impractical virtues and lives and preaches to live only pragmatically in accordance to reality lastly and most importantly he teaches us one of the very basic virtues drawn from a quote that we all must have heard that a candle can light a thousand other candles without diminishing itself which means that happiness if shared only adds to its glory the way to peace is allowing everybody around to rejoice in the same spirit of happiness and bliss things seem to fall in place once we take time out to be happy it's very difficult to notice and recognize if something is working if we continuously focus on what isn't being the saddest and the happiest and allowing these polarities to coexist together in peace is the most transformational experience growing evolving transcending simultaneously becoming and unbecoming this is the complex art of being human and the key is to not aim for perfection but for wholeness So let this tale always remind us to surrender ourselves to the present moment and make the most of it. Let this tale teach us to not run away from our thoughts, rather to allow our thoughts to gently have their own way as we cooperate with them. Let this tale motivate us to share our joys and happiness with everybody around. And let this tale always remind us to take time out to be happy, to grow, to evolve and to understand. Let's go with the flow. Thank you.